Hello once again and welcome back to another episode of Father and Sundays, the unexplained regard to absolutely nothing. We are on episode 87. 87, nearly 90. Yep. And we're talking about crime and punishment today. We certainly are. So stick around if you want any more. Hello, Dad. It is 2023. It is 2023. It's actually 2023. It's actually 2023 For now us as when well. we called it. Yes, yes, because this is going out a week later. Um, yeah. Did you have a good new year? It was all right. Yeah. It wasn't raucous, was it? But it was It was quite nice. We had a family well, get together. Oh, like as in during the day? Yeah. Right, during the day, yeah, it was fine. We went to a family because, see, you, when you, at Christmas you see all your different sides of the family. All ten you of them. You certainly see different sides uh, of your family at Christmas. Kind yeah. Of, and yeah. Um, and we went and saw mum's side of the family, didn't we? Yeah, because... Yeah, go on. Uh, no. No, because, yeah, it's... Uh, <laughs> yep, yep. So my sister-in-law... Uh, as in my wife's sister and my wife's brother were there with their other halves. Your sister-in-law, as in your wife's sister and your wife's brother. They're both your sisters-in-law. Well, what you know what I mean. And so they have got round to, to my mother-in-law's and, yeah, we try and do something between Christmas and New Year most years, don't we? And it just so happened this fall fell on uh, New Year's Eve. Um, but, yeah, it was very nice. Uh, it was the evening of, was very exciting. Oh, uh, don't take the mickey out of the evening. It's one of those things, but... Uh, there was just the three of us at home in the evening, weren't there? Yeah, we sat there and um, we sat there. Actually, we were up here and uh, should we go downstairs and because uh, we finished, didn't we record a podcast? We, we may have been. No, no we no, were no, sorting no. out. We didn't. We were, we were pub, rent, getting ready to publish it. Oh, that's right. Yeah, we yeah. were doing a last So we were up stages, here doing some it? stuff podcast related and we went, right, let's go downstairs now. We got it all done. We had plenty of time. Let's go downstairs and even plenty of time we managed to work. I publish it early, yeah. one minute past midnight. Went, let's go downstairs. Let's ask mum if she wants to play a game. Went downstairs, oh, mum's watching Last Leg. I like Last Leg, but I was like, oh, okay. And then that was it, so really, we, we basically it? thought, well, after Last Leg, and mum did a jigsaw, and then we didn't have enough time well, because you were asleep. Actually, now it does sound really unexciting, but yes, I did fall asleep. Yep. I had been up We were sitting there, from and then you just, eh, let's do something exciting, and then you were asleep. Oh, sorry. It's all right. I'd been up from very early working that day, so out in the wind and rain, it wasn't particularly pleasant. So I think by the time we got to about, well, let's say, I want to say 12 o'clock, but say I'm then. going to say uh, oh. it was actually around about 10 o'clock. I was really struggling to stay awake. Yeah, you but were. But we were awake at New Year's and saw the spectacular fireworks <laughs> and the... I, we had to wake bombs you up. going off around our area. Yes, you did have to wake me up. I'd look, look, I can't... I, I didn't know whether you wanted to be woken up, so I just I did I did. I didn't want to just be left and then wake up and you two have gone to bed. And, and then I carry you upstairs. Yeah, like I used to do with you. But no, it was good. It was it was all right. It's. I mean, I used to go... I've been to parties in the past on New Year's. We've done different things. Um, you know, there's no best way of celebrating as long as you're happy when you do it well and maybe this year will be the father and sundays uh we'll really take off and we'll have the massive budget that we can have a we'll have a new massive year's budget party. we'll have a massive new year's party with lots of celebrities and when we're and people we'll, yeah we're gonna be millionaires by the end of the year surely well undoubtedly really isn't it it's gotta be it's gotta happen one of these years anyway oh, i'm very hopeful that's my new year's resolution for this year to become a millionaire Oh, okay. <laughs> we did get, I, I got a, a bit obsessed with something. Before we go on to the subject matter, totally. Um, my brother-in-law bought me the Ripley's Believe It or Not book. Yep. Now, he's Andrew and he listens to this podcast. And I thought, right. I think one of the reasons he got it. And I think one of the reasons he got it, yes, he said to me was he listened to some of the stuff, rubbish I come out with on these podcasts. And he thought he'd help me out by giving me something which... Um, I'm guessing he thinks he's a little bit more factual than perhaps some of the stuff I come out with, although I do check up on my stuff. But one of the things in it I'm absolutely obsessed with. Can I take a guess on what it is? Yeah, go on. Is it the tiny horse? It's a tiny horse, Connor. Yeah. It's it's midget, the midget horse, right? Is that what it's called? It's called, well, look, I wouldn't normally call, you know, it's a dwarf horse, but they've called it dwarfs. smidget. Yeah. So they've obviously called it smidget for a reason. Wouldn't call it smidget the horse. I called it Smidget the Midget Horse. It was 21 inches tall, Connor. 21. I, it just blows my mind. So that's got to be um, that that tall for people listening. 
Yeah, I'm this is going my hands for a out. podcast. Yeah, I reckon that's about right, Connor. Yeah, about twenty-one inches. I was a holding my hand. Born out. on the April on April the thirteenth, same birthday as NJ, nineteen seventy-nine in Jackson, Not Michigan. Same year then. Um, but yeah, I mean, I was just had this tiny little saddle on it. Presumably, no one rode it unless it was like a squirrel or something. Uh, on the same pages, they had uh, an extra long deer. Which which was just a bit bizarre. Well, that's when you one yeah when your deer isn't long enough, you need to get a extra long one. Well, it it looked like someone had got three deers, the back end of one, the front end of one, and the middle bit of the other, and then stuck them all together. But like had a little bit more elongated deer. And the other thing on the page was a twisted rabbit that was actually you got to think most. I think all of these things were had been stuffed by this point. That I was looking at the pictures of, of them in this particular book, but that one, it, it it's apparently a rabbit that its head was twisted up right. It looks to me like someone who's rubbish at taxidermy. And See, this and is the thing you you don't really know. You and know. they finished it and they thought, oh no, I made the right head. I put his head on the wrong way round. Oh, I'll tell you what, we call it the twisted rabbit. And then they've just got away with it. But I, t- I I can't stop looking at it. I keep going back in. There's things like this in the past with me. If there's something in there that it might be even something that frightens me, if I, I I'll constantly go back and look at the pictures. When I was a kid, I think there was a tarantula in a book. Now I'm not so bothered about them now, but I would always go back. There's a shark book which has got some shark injuries in it, and I as I didn't want to see it, but I wanted to see it. You it's know a morbid I mean? interest, isn't it? It is a morbid interest. I tell you what is, else is a morbid interest: crime and punishment, Connor. Not the show. Wow, straight in there. Did you see that whole bit at the beginning was was just just to come to this point? All right now, well, not the show, not the show, crime and punishment, but our the obsession people seem to have with crime and punishment. We've talked about this in the past uh, when we talked about TV, and I think when we did our murder mystery episode, uh, go back and listen to that. It's well worth it for some great accents and characters that Connor really loves. Um, but people are interested in in sort of murder and Again, crime. Yeah, and like you said, like. it's a morbid interest. Becky has a really strong interest. To, she has like she, killer doc, not killer. Um, it's like a death row, yeah, sort of documentary, isn't it? Although she yeah. did used to watch a reality show where they sent in um, just people into a prison. Oh, that's right. Yeah, yeah, and they just. I couldn't was, ever get my head around was, exactly what was supposed to be happening. It was a, you know? basically that they, they all got. I think they got paid to go in there, yeah, and also exposure on TV. But they basically got sent in there to kind of be snitches. Right. But it can't have been a proper prison, surely. It was a real prison, yeah. Yeah, but they were real prisons. stabbed up and things like that in prisons, didn't they? Yeah. Right, okay. I did see bits I think of some it, of them but I just couldn't get up in there. Oh, right, okay. Well, she did, She liked that, and she do, does like those things. I think I've mentioned once before, but during the pandemic when we were all housebound, I quite often used to come down and she'd be sitting there and she'd be watching about how... Was it how... How How I Met Your Mother. No, not How how I Met Your Murderer. How I Am... Yeah, it was something like that, the the makeup of a serial killer oh. or, or things like this, right? Really bleak things. And I and I, I used to watch it and I go, are you enjoying this? Yeah, yeah, it's really interesting. And I used Isn't to check... Ha- making a murderer? Or? It might be, but I used to check by the side of her to see if she had a Padham pen because I wasn't sure if she was just watching it because she was interested or she was actually taking notes and... I wanted someone to be aware of that in case we all none of us woke up one day just because she was bored in the pandemic and yeah. done us all in. But no, she yeah, she's a prime example of someone that um, loves that stuff. Another one is is your mother who watches loads and loads of she watches dramas. Yeah, but there are a lot of them are crime dramas. A lot yeah, of them are crime dramas, but she doesn't watch real ones. Like which isn't oh no no Becky she's not interested reality. in that. Becky wants to see the real p- people and isn't interested in the drama. No, Mum wants to see the drama. Isn't interested in reality. No, exactly. But it is. It's I, I get it to a certain extent. I get the you know they're interesting. They are interesting. They are. And I've watched I've watched documentaries about some of the worst kind of people that have existed. You know, in that sort of area where they've been killers and that. And and it's kind of you you kind of can't get your head round why someone you know what what uh, 
takes a, a what seems like a normal person into that realm. Well, yeah. I guess they're not, they've got a few issues before that you might not know about that brings them into that sort of domain. But it, it's, you know, I mean, we're talking about murders and things like that here. But murders. obviously murders. But obviously crime, anything from fraud to to that sort of thing. To I, I pick fraud as if that's no no victims. But what I mean is it's not a physical attack on someone. It's it's a financial attack on someone. Mm-hmm. Could it be equally as devastating? But you know, there's so many different things. What I find interesting is jury service. Have you ever done jury service? Never been asked to do jury service, right? And maybe it's all a myth. Well, it, it's not a myth because I know I know my dad got called up for jury well, it's, service. It's funny, actually, jury service. I've seen people um, in work, all people get called up for jury service, but it seems to all be around the same time. It just seems to be coincidental that they all like one went and then like a month later, and another one went. It's almost like, and yet you never see it. I think it's fairly they random. Went, they went. I think it's fairly random as long as there's this some um, particular. Uh, you've got to have been a British citizen for a certain amount of time. You 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 can't have worked in the judiciary at all, and in certain areas and that you can't be involved because I think you've been too close to that sort of process anyway. But um, I know my dad got called up for jury service, and I think it was when my. Mum was pregnant. It might even been with my sister. It wasn't with me, but with my sister and my brother. And Ow, because there were some health toe. issues in there, he was let off basically because he he said he needed to be with my mum. Um, so he wasn't able to do it. So I think they were very strict. There's there's various reasons why you can say no, and I think you can actually defer it, but you can only do that the once. I think um, I've also when you can go down there on a day and they cannot pick you on that day and they just send you home again. Oh yeah, I think so. I think that's it's it's and to be honest, you can go there like, like you say, you can go there. It could be a number of days going backwards and forwards. I think it must be really really frustrating for whoever you work for. And I remember someone from my work um, got called up for jury service and was going to and from kept coming back saying. No, they don't need me again today. But, he, you you know, you've you got to do it. It's not like something you can just you're, say you're no to. You're essentially getting paid for the whole day, so you don't necessarily go back to work afterwards either. No, but you. it's funny because uh, I think there's a, a majority of businesses pay you they get you, you normally. You get your lunch paid for as well. Yeah, you get like, yeah, a certain allowance. But I think now as well, I suppose if there's smaller companies, they don't pay you. So then you have to go through a process of claiming the money back yeah. and all the rest of it. But would you be, can I just say, would you, is that something you'd like to do um, for an experience? Someday it'd be interesting, wouldn't it, for like a I case? It, it depends on what you're doing it for. I guess we all think, oh God, it, because I imagine if you get called up for one of the big cases, like you think about in America when OJ Simpson. It's quite Simpson, a lot of pressure because you can get in big trouble for like talking about it. Yeah. But people like in that, if it's a really high profile case like I say the OJ Simpson case the people in the jury almost become personalities as well and it must be very very different difficult yeah because suddenly you're you're plucked out of just your normal life and you're you know, I'm not saying I mean the, the vast majority of cases would be pretty mundane stuff that I wanted to say something go on so I was just thinking about because I've realised this this topic is is moving away from where I was called talking because you made me answer a question. Sorry, sorry. Um, it's okay, I forgive you. But you know, I was thinking about, for example, if when I did my previous role, where well, there was quite a few of us, mm. it wouldn't have necessarily caused that much of an issue. Like, for so example, you being a postman, if you were, got called up on jury duty, and you had to go, yeah, they'd maybe struggle a little bit, but they'd still be able to cover things. I think if I got called up on jury duty right now, I'm only a te- I'm on a team of six people. Yeah, but 
That, I mean, they'd be able to cover it, but it just makes me think there'd be massive ripples, and that's why it causes such an issue for businesses. It does. I think a business will go, oh no, because they have to let you do they it. They have to let you do it. Yeah, it's 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 by law that if you get called up, I mean, you, as I say, you can go through the process of trying to withdraw, but you have to have a very good reason. But it makes me think there's some people like in certain businesses that if they're not there, things just fall apart. Well, I think I think to a certain extent, I don't know how far it reaches. But How much if you've got, w- if you're uh, in a job that's, you I guess if you were, say you were a doctor or a, or a surgeon or something like that, then I guess that, you know, if you've got a valid enough reason, but they have got to draw the line somewhere because I suppose anybody could say, oh, actually, um, you know, it, it's going to cost my company this man, so I can't do it, you know, and, that, and, and they would never have anybody, would they? That's, that's yeah, like the imagine thing. an entire business having to shut down. Yeah, I mean that's always the case for someone self-employed, but yeah. Um, so just to round off this particular first section with this, uh, jury service twelve people. Do you know why there's twelve people? They call up more than that for one. Well, they do, but why there's actually it's a it's it's supposed to be twelve people. Um, so it's an, it's one an even number. It is an even number. There's a, there's a logical reason for it, but in the past they, they've talked about it being like the twelve, almost like have a twelve that you could have twelve uh, signs of the zodiac, with twelve different sorts of personalities. Yeah, which makes no sense whatsoever because you might call up twelve people who all got their birthday in June, <laughs> so yeah. that's not going to work out anyway. But then the twelve apostles as as, as well. You know, there's there's that months. There's a, yeah, there's a there's a number. Twelve it's a, fingers. It's a number, but the bottom line is, if you've got twelve people, you've got the chances uh, percentage wise of the different sorts of people from different walks of life yeah. and different personalities, which would uh, make it a fairer um, decision. Let's say that. Yeah. Um, yeah. Just a couple more facts. There's approximately 89,520 prisoners in custody, or was in 2022, 80,660 in England and Wales, uh, 7,430 in Scotland, 1,640 in Northern Ireland. That's a huge amount, isn't it? Oh, yeah. Okay. How our animals work. Number 32, the magpie. This mythical beast was said to roam the hamlets and villages of old England, stealing money and automobiles on an alarmingly regular basis. Fortunately, there existed a rhyme which legend tells us hypnotised and, as such, nullified these harbingers of doom, but to utter this now is illegal and punishable by death, as they are protected species. (laughs) Okay, so, a little bit grim this, but a bit surprising. Um... We talk about crime when we talk about going to jail, and I said about how many people are in jail as of 2022. But obviously, there was a time in this country, and still happens around the world, that people are executed for their crimes. Um, I'm always surprised, and I have seen this before, but the last execution in the UK was the 13th of August, 1964. Now, yeah. Now I know you're young, and I know you know I'm thirty years older than you. It was only four years before you were born. But it was only four years before I was born. It was in the lifetime of my sister. You know, um, it was just before your mum was born. That just seems mad. And they were two people that were um, Peter Allen and uh, Gwyn Evans, um, who were I, I presume hanged because I believe that's what happened there. The or last. Hung. Yeah, or hung. Last female executed in the UK was Ruth Ellis, who I did know about, hanged for killing her boyfriend, and that was in 1955, July the 13th, 1955. Or hung. Or hung. Um, see, this is the thing with capital punishment. It's, it's very much a, a topic of debate, because some people really do believe that there's certain things that people do that they shouldn't be allowed to continue, they shouldn't be able to carry on, they shouldn't be able to even yeah. be in prison. Like they're wasting space, wasting time and space in prison. Yeah, people often say they're a waste of space, a waste of air. And but my, see, I is a difficult way. Is a really? T- I don't really want to get onto the too much of a debate about it. But no, it's it's one of these things that it's. I've always looked at thinking, but if someone dies, I 
get that's the ultimate punishment. They can't physically do anything anymore. And we've kind of just, it's almost like um, just getting rid of the, just, yeah. all right, okay, they physically cannot do anything more. We'll just get rid of them. We'll basically bin them is the way it's been looked yeah. at. Um, but it doesn't really feel like they've been punished. But I do also get the same time. Yeah, and the what's the point people, of punish, punishing them? The argument, really, a prison is supposed to be there to bring paper, people back to the doesn't norm. work for everyone. Doesn't work for everybody. If people are that uh, sick of mind that they've created, they've done some of these atrocities, then I get why people say it. But the same token, because uh, they they will say while they're in prison, you're paying for them to be in prison, so you spend an awful lot of money for them to do that. But what you're saying as well is that if if they die, that's it. If they're in prison. Do they suffer for longer? Oh, it's a very, very deep. Anyway, the, it, we sim, won't sim, dwell sim, too much. Similarly, on yeah. Sorry, I was just, just going to say uh, one more thing. Similarly, um, I've forgotten what it was. Okay. Um, yeah. Can, continue speaking. No, well, I, I was going to say. Uh, also, I mean, we know in the US, uh, we talked about death row and all the rest of it. Obviously, in the US, it changes from state to state what they do. Which makes it a lot oh, more complicated. Oh, I just my point. Go on. Yeah, sorry. They, it has been done in the past where they, turns out they've been later on proven in, innocent. Innocent, yeah. yeah. And that's the big issue yeah. with it all. Um, just the last thing on that then. By the end of 2021, a total of 108 countries had abolished the death penalty. 55 still have it. 108 is massive though. It is. And, um, Do you reckon when we live on Mars, the death penalty be allowed there? Uh... I'd imagine and there'll be enough mishaps anyway. Isn't it interesting that... So, is suicide is illegal in America? Is it really? I believe so. Yeah. Again, probably in some states, probably not in all states. Oh, I don't know this, but that's suicide what really complicates Suicide is illegal in most things. places. Oh, yeah, I guess it is, yeah. But the death penalty isn't. <laughs> but the death penalty isn't everywhere in America either, is it? No, that's what I mean. Not all states have it. And depending on the states in America is what they actually do and how... Some <laughs> people take the death penalty upon themselves. It, sorry, I shouldn't say that. <laughs> oh, dear. Oh, this is taking a turn, hasn't it? <laughs> so we might lighten it up a little bit. Yes, please. Okay. Did we're you... Lighten it up. We're still talking about crime. And well, we are crime, but it's nothing like that. Right, so that, that's very serious. And we Let's know talk that. about pets now. <laughs> right. Did you know... Um, well, I actually heard this recently... <laughs> No. It's a really good idea not to die in the Houses of Parliament. Uh, yeah. Not strictly that you get prosecuted for it, but if you die in the Houses of Parliament, you are legible... Uh, no, you are... Um, you could have a state funeral. Yeah. Sorry, I don't know where I, I lost the train of what, what words I went. And, and it's, now, still going. it's still going. It's still going now. It's just gone past. I've just yeah. watched the train go past. So I'd heard that anyway, but I don't think that would actually happen. I think they'd just shuffle people out no, the back. No, I think they would. Yeah, do you reckon? No, what, I think what happens... It did something no, 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 What up, happens is, what they do is they... Don't pronounce the they death. Don't, they call an ambulance to come and collect them and they don't uh, pronounce them dead pronounce until they've dead left until the until they left the building. Right. And that sorts it out and makes sure that no one can claim to have yeah, a state so funeral. If 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 I look if you're with me and I happen to be in the Houses of Parliament yeah. um and I die, can yeah. you like stop them letting me get out? Yeah. Okay. So that we can do a big old celebration for you. Um okay, we'll keep going then. Uh South Korea. Apparently all cameras have the f- phone camera sound on because they were having so much trouble. What? So, you know when oh, you take right. a picture oh, with your phone ching, ching, and it goes ching, 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 like yeah, a camera Yeah, was it upskirting? It was because of the upskirting. Apparently, it was such a problem in the subways with hidden cameras that all phones now are fitted. You cannot own a phone that hasn't got... You can't switch it off on the phones. I think as anything that's sold in, in South Korea, that is, uh, by default, it has to be on, which I thought I found really interesting anyway. Yeah. It's, a, it's when you're subtly trying to take a picture of the person across the train. Well, now I've done it, and I've not done it in a in a sort of where we talk about upstairs and things way. like that in a creepy way. But I've wanted to take a picture of someone that perhaps looked like someone, you know. So oh, look at this guy. Does the it's, video do? Oh, it we as well. did it once that someone looked like um, who's the guy who played Gollum? Uh, oh, uh, Andy Serkis. Uh, uh, yeah, 
he was at a different table at a party we were at and he looked really like him. We kept trying to have photos taken with him in the background so we could say, look at this geezer. We weren't having a go at him. We weren't being, but you know, that's that when you we, That looked like Mr. Bean as well. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. And there was the guy in America that um, we got off the Frozen ride and mm. he had a chicken hat on. Yeah, and oh, that's bag, right. Yeah, said, yeah, that famous chicken, chicken man. man or something like that. And we, we didn't want him to know we were taking a picture of him or just because him. he might have been... For, for, I'm sure he we, would have been fired no, but yeah. he's wearing well, a chicken he's got, hat. He's wearing a chicken hat and he's got I am the chicken man written on him. He's probably wanting people to ask him. Anyway, look, it's illegal to wrestle a bear in South Africa. Are there many bears in South Africa? There are no bears in South Africa. Right, okay. So I don't quite know. I'm going to go to my South African boss about that. (laughs) (laughs) Ask her about that. See if that's true. Um, Here we go. A few more. You cannot be overweight in Japan unless you're a sumo wrestler, right? Between 40 years of age and... And what do they call... Do they do your BMI or something? Well, basically, between 40 and 74 years of age, you have to have an annual waist measurement, Right. And if you're a man and you're over, and now get this, 33.5 inches around the waist, right? Yeah, that's quite small. That is quite small. Well, we, Japanese people are, tend to be smaller than, 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 uh, than, say, European people. Women, 35.4, you get fined. So if you go and have your annual waist measurement and you're over 33.5 and you're a man, you get fined. If you're over 35.4 inches around a waist you get fined as a woman you know what this, this is um that's interesting this because though i don't think it's a good idea i get the idea yeah like i get the idea of going it's good in a way to try and help people it because it's gonna if, if somewhere that's got social health care like for example the uk where yeah. health care is paid for like as in if we had less overweight people then we'd There'd be less people tackling things like diabetes and other heart disease and stuff like that. Be essentially a healthier population, Mm. and therefore cost the NHS less money. So, if they were to find people who are overweight, I know it's not just easy as that. You can't just find people overweight because there's sometimes reasons people are overweight. But if you were to find people overweight, yeah, if they've got a condition. Now, what they've said though, that's far too small. Yes, but you're talking about a, um, a physique in a country that's different to ours anyway. But I get the principle of... And it's interesting because they've got an ageing population as well, haven't they? They've got an Asian ageing population. Wow. <laughs> right. And another one like that, you can't pass wind in Malawi. In 2011, they, they created the air fouling legislation. There's still a lot of discussion whether breaking wind forms part of that. But that's out there and that at the moment sits as part of that. You're not supposed to break wind. Now, I thought if you didn't break wind, I mean, it could be in the comfort and and discreet location. That's not a problem because it's not healthy to keep it in, surely. But I think it's obviously a bit of a problem there. Well, I, I try not to do it in places that I'm not on my own or not in no my absolutely own like in my, when I get into my car or, or when I'm leaving work for oh the that's day, nice to know whack <laughs> so, so anybody if you work with Connor and you suddenly see him getting into his car and you think oh I could do with a lift to the station if he's been in there more than a minute don't even bother I'd, I'd a, <laughs> I had a group of um, a group of people I was I was training at work and I was sitting in the room and they always arrive back late. And I was thinking, oh, it's all right. They'll arrive back late from the break. And I, uh, I went, did, I, I blew off. <laughs> oh, no, mate. And then I don't this know, was I, the one time they turned up on oh, time. I can't <laughs> believe you're telling me all this on this podcast. Anyway, moving on from that, it's illegal for your chicken to cross the road in Georgia. Apparently. I think I knew that one. Yeah. You're not allowed to let your chickens. Basically, you're not allowed to let your chickens run, run free. I mean, whether they cross the road or whatever they do, it's just that's the term, isn't it? Why did a chicken cross the road? You have to keep your chickens under control, otherwise it's a hefty fine. Um, you must provide for your elderly parents in China. I totally agree with this. In their culture, they look after the elders within their family. And I think in this country, we should be doing exactly the same. And as a father to a son who's sitting opposite me, I think you should be thinking about my old age and helping me through that. And I don't mean by putting me in a home like you've talked about before, you and your sister, but by looking after me and... and, I do look after you. Yeah. Well, you need to continue to do that. Because you're a little bit insane, so we have to look after you. Fair enough. 
It's illegal to wear a fake moustache in an Alabama church. Right? Okay. You're not allowed to wear a fake moustache in Alabama that makes, churches. See, rules like this make me think that it must have happened. Well, Therefore, basically... It's become it, a problem. It, so the, 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 you can wear a moustache, but if it causes mirth, if it causes laughter then you have to leave. So this so, has clearly been a problem beforehand. So clearly, people have gone in there with huge, big walrus moustaches, yeah, right? People have, laughed, people have it. laughed and it's caused a disruption in, in the service. So Because all uh, of these would have had a reason to them. Exactly. So if you go in there and you've got a moustache, but it looks like a real moustache and there's no problem with it and people just don't look, think you look stupid, they think you look all right, then you could get away with it. You go in there with a Mr Pringle or a Fu Manchu going on, no chance. This is another. Why is why specifically in a church? Why I has, think it's because it, it. Why has the parish got so much control? Well, that's a church for you. They they're cramp. They're sort of coming down on people with about their facial hair and everything. Right. Uh, it's illegal to pee in the ocean in Portugal, but they can't prosecute because there's no way of people knowing. We've talked about before in swimming pools when people pee, and there was this. Uh, the only way they're ever going to know about, is if you're standing on the dock. Yeah. Yeah, you actually uh, are pointing out of the sea. Yeah. <laughs> right. <laughs> so, okay. It's illegal to shoot Bigfoot in British Columbia in Canada. Right. Now, this is interesting, this. We've talked about Bigfoot. I'm a little bit obsessed with it, but we've done a, a even done an um, episode of, of uh, the podcast on, on Bigfoot. You can get fined up to $250,000 if you shoot a Bigfoot. Canadian dollars. Canadian dollars. But that is irrelevant, surely? Because if you shot... I'm, I'm not saying you should. I think you should leave any... Uh, whether mythical creature or whatever, you should leave everything alone. However, if you shot a Bigfoot, I don't think you'd worry about paying a $250,000 fine, would you? Because you could probably earn millions out of it. Depends if you shot and killed it. If you shot and killed it, you still earn millions out of it. No, but if you didn't kill it, my point being is you wouldn't possibly make as much had you not killed it. No, but that's what they're saying. Oh, yeah, I suppose they shot Bigfoot. But I think they're talking about if you shot one in order to display it, you know. But that's not nearly enough money, is it? Because you would earn... Well, maybe with inflation it will increase. Well, let's hope so. I don't want people doing that. It's illegal to build sandcastles in Spain. Apparently, you can get fined for... I have no idea why this is the case, right? But apparently you can get fined for building sandcastles in Spain. And interestingly... It's and a bit like graffiti, isn't it? Yeah, but it's it's in respect... You think about all those incredible sandcastles people make and sand sculptures, right? It's, it's, I can guarantee there's been sandcastles made by children in Spain. Well, exactly. And apparently in 100 euros in Mallorca. So I'm hoping to go to Mallorca this year with Odds your on, mother. You making a I'll s- make a sandcastle, see if we get done. Right, I'm going to whistle through these because I'm conscious of time. In certain parts of France, you cannot die without a plot. Right, now, basically, there's certain parts of France that are so overpopulated with because they've, they've got church hearts, they've got these spectacular in Paris. If you ever yeah. go to Paris and go to... They're absolutely incredible, the mausoleums and, 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 and the grave, graves of different people there. Yep. So basically what they're saying is that they're so overcrowded that don't die unless you've got something sorted out. Don't know that they can actually do much about it after you die, but there you go. It's illegal to wear lacy underwear in Russia, Belarus and Kazakhstan. It must be made of at least 6% cotton. They say because of health and safety. I don't know whether that's true or not. It's illegal to wear a mask in Denmark since 2018. Now, I'm sure they had to modify that law. Well, actually, some Scandinavian countries didn't actually... Did they not? No. Well, when you read on, it says helmets, scarves, hats, fake beards. Fake beards, a lot of fake facial hair going on in this sort of stuff. And burkas. Uh, because of identification in public places, they didn't want people with masks on. Now, obviously, during the pandemic, we all wore masks, or most of us did, all the sensible ones. So, 
Um, yeah, I don't care if you pull a face. That's I true. I pull a face. Um, <laughs> no, I think you you're the same as me about it. But you know, um, but for identification purposes, what makes you laugh is when they show a picture of it. Um, they'll show someone with a unicorn head on or something like that. I don't think they're actually talking about that sort of thing, but they're basically saying it's a bit like when you go into a bank, you're not supposed to have a crash helmet on because they need to see your face because there's CCTV and they need to see who they're dealing yeah. with. Yeah. Uh, this one I did know about. It's illegal to wear camouflage in certain places, Caribbean especially. Uh, the only people are allowed to wear um, uh, cam- uh khaki and camouflage sort of stuff are the armed forces it's because no one see you coming exactly when i went to america when i went to the states i did just look up because i had heard some stuff around that and i had a pair of shorts that were camouflage shorts so i didn't know whether there'd be an issue or not going through sort of the uh if you think about security through through um, yeah but nothing happened they fell down but nothing happened um it's illegal to ride a cow while drunk in Scotland. I think this uh, goes back to a time when perhaps people were drunk and would try and climb on a horse or a cow or something like that to get home. Yep. But it's a bit like being in ch- drunk in charge of any sort of vehicle. You'll get done for it. Uh, only two more. You must wear Speedos on French beaches. I've heard that one. Right. Now, when you first hear that, you think, What? Like budgie smugglers. You, why? I would never wear budgie smugglers. And so when I go to a French beach, I wouldn't wear them. But basically, when you hear why they say this, it's because they don't want people, whereas people go to places, say in Spain, you wear swim shorts, you come out, you dry off, you go into town, go and get something to eat. They don't want people mixing up those activities. So they went, if you're on the beach and you're in the sea, you're in speedos because you're not likely to walk through town and go and sit in a restaurant with a pair of speedos on. Fair so enough. So they want people to... Again, they've got their reasons for yeah, it. Yeah, so it might actually starts off sounding ridiculous and then makes sense. A bit like the moustache in the church. And the last one, and I want you to get this checked out as well because I know you are, uh, know someone who's Polish. In Poland, you're not allowed to have Winnie the Pooh on any clothes or any depiction of that. Because he doesn't wear trousers. Right. And it says it could upset impressionable children. Now, we talked about this the other day. There's yep. a number of cartoon characters that don't, that wear, don't trousers. wear trousers. Doesn't seem to be an issue, but apparently in Poland that is. Right. And that is the end of my little tour around the world. So I cool. hope you're a little bit more enlightened. Excellent. <laughs> I'm enjoying all this conversation about crime and punishment, but I really wish there was a song so I could learn more. <laughs> yeah, a yeah. song that you could learn more. Well, I have actually written a song about the judicial system, uh, the uh, the downfalls of it and, you know, the pluses of it, I think. Anyway, yes, I've written a song. Do you want to hear it? No, thank you. Okay. Actually, they've changed my mind. Okay. I'll hit play. Hit play. Just look at my face 
I'm innocent and should receive a pardon How was I supposed to know that when you really need to go It's a crime to take a in the king's back garden Guilty, guilty You're heading straight to jail Guilty, guilty There's not much chance of bail Guilty, guilty You'll end up someone's bitch A lovely song thanks uh, can i just say uh my to apologize to everybody because my vocals seem to be deteriorating week on week where i thought maybe i'd get a bit stronger and i'd actually more i do the better it'll get they seem to be a combination of colds and coughs and everything else it just seems to be getting worse and worse you're just, what you're saying is you're just a highly diseased man i am but yeah. i will persevere yeah anyway okay. onwards with a game a quiz yeah. i assume not so much a quiz, but we'll still play the stig at Sorry, some point. It's but, not a quiz at all. Well, no, it's not really a quiz at all. I don't know no. why you said not so much quiz. It's not well, a quiz because, at all. Yeah, we, oh, I know it's part of the the quiz. What is it? Uh, anyway. It's not a quiz. But, no, it's not a quiz, no. So, basically... Um, Can I just say, it feels like ages ago that we uh, recorded the first part of the podcast. It does, doesn't it? It's, it yeah. almost feels like a different day. Almost feels like nearly a week. Yeah. Anyway... <laughs> So the game, uh, I thought there's a lot of, we talk about the serious crimes, we've done a lot of talk about the serious crimes and some of the things. I remember that, all of our discussion yeah, prior. You know, you know, only a little while ago, it should be fresh in your memory. Um, but there are other crimes, crimes that go under the radar, crimes that don't pot- uh, potentially get looked at and dealt with. And I, I think this is the forum for those crimes. Oh, uh, yeah, 100%. Uh, this is the and forum I for think, that kind of stuff. Uh, I know you have and I have got some a detail that's been either sent to us or, or by whatever media. And it's it's for us to sit there and, and look at that and see whether that's legitimate or not. So yeah. could you play the sting? Oh, of, of course I can play the sting. Do you have things that f*** you off, make you angry, upset? and cross Well this is the place to get something done The judicial courts of father and son What a lovely sting What a lovely sting Is that really nice sting And that's I a would fine that example sting. of the vocal uh, range that I have not got. Would you like me to rate the sting? Go on then. Out of seven? Yep. Solid six. Wow. Yeah. You clearly haven't listened to it. Nope. Right. Okay. <laughs> so, um, yeah, like like the sting says, Connor, which this is the judicial court of father and son. Judicial court. That was and, about to say and that. And we are uh, appointed as judges. Appointed as judges. To these See, these, these particular, particular. I don't. That, that is, oh, I'm going to write that down. I'm just saying the fact that I remember what you're. Oh, I see. Because I see. we were discussed it, and I so, remember what the sting said. Yes. So we'll go straight <laughs> into this then. So, uh, have you got a case, or shall I come with my first case that we need um, to discuss? I can go first if you want. Okay. So um, I've had a strongly worded message from one of my constituents. Yes. Uh, of the bedroom. Yep. And the only constituents of this bedroom is me. Uh, So I've had a strongly worded email from myself. Yep. That highlights the annoyance of walking along the street. Yeah. And coming the opposite direction. Yeah. Is a collection of people. It may be two. It may be more. But there's a collection of people coming the other way along a narrow street. Yeah. And what person A does is in the person... Just the person on their own. Single person. Single yeah. person walking towards these people. For some reason, 
has to step off the curb and into the road. Why is this the case? Why are these people abreast? Is that the right phrase? Abreast. Walking abreast. Walking abreast. Probably is the best way of putting that, yeah. not just abreast. Why are why these people, people just have abreast? Say, yes. <laughs> uh, why are they walking abreast on this pavement and not allowing room for this person coming the other way? If people can't behave correctly and move out the way for this single person coming the, this direction, I feel like they shouldn't be allowed to stand next to each other at all. Everyone should have to walk single file everywhere. Right. Do you want me to comment on this now? Yes, please. I am 100% behind you on this. Me, it's the... And when I say behind you, in single file behind you. Yeah. Because, oh, sorry, the constituent. The, whoever wrote in it, with this, it is a massive bugbear of mine. I think it's uh, rude. Mm-hmm. I think it's bad manners. I think people need to uh, act with a little bit more respect. I think if you're walking along a road, you've both got equal rights to be on oh, sorry a, a pathway or any sort of uh, any any sort of place you've got equal both got equal right to be there if i'm i have this every single day and i think unless it's a cyclist on the pavement which shouldn't be on the pavement in the first yeah. place but even in that case you look at each other you think right there's someone coming in the opposite direction I'm going to change what I do in order to accommodate that person. What you don't do is walk around this earth blindly like you're the only people that exist. See, and I can, to a certain extent, I am also one of these people that will just stand just the edge of a car and step onto the curb or something like that to allow them to go past and even stand still. And you know what? Sometimes I can let that slide, but it's when I'm not even acknowledged for it. Right, that's even that's worse. moving on to the second point now. So, not only have you become the bigger person, let that person through, but that person hasn't even acknowledged you've done that because they are still in their own world. Right, that's where I feel some sort of punishment needs to be. Yeah. Not just a single file, um, some sort of uh, uh, well. I take the law into my own hands at them particular occasions. Because you are a vigilante, aren't you? Infuriates it. I am. Part-time superhero. I am. And I tend to make a quite a point of letting them know by saying, no, you're absolutely welcome or something of that. And they look around and are horrified. But I don't know why people walk this earth and don't consider other people. So yeah. I am sorry, but... Those people have got, I mean, whether it's a custodial sentence or whether it's just banned from coming out of their front door. I feel like what should happen is for those people walking multiple abreast, two abreast yeah. or whatever, they should uh, be posed with a fine. Yeah. Um, supposed that the person, like, doesn't get, like, supposed the, the person come the other way is upset by it. Mm. If this person going the other way moves out the way to allow the people the the pack come past, and they are not um, and they are acknowledged and thanked, then potentially the the fine could be let go of a warning. Yeah, but I think if they are not thanked at all for it and they are not acknowledged, then I would say a two year prison sentence without bail. Yep. Done. Yep. Right. <laughs> I think we both feel quite strongly about that. Well, I run surgeries, right, for the community to come in and talk to me about. When you say you run surgeries, do you mean like you operate on people's legs? Not medical surgeries, right, no. Okay. The surgeries in order for people to raise concerns uh, like in the community and things like that. No, nothing to do with oh. anything medical. And something came up in the most recent one. Uh, uh, someone who wants to remain anonymous. On a daily basis, What's their name? Uh, anonymous. Oh. On a daily basis, I go to bed and switch on the television to watch, let's say, Family Guy, American Dad, something like that. When my wife comes to bed, she turns the volume down, but not completely, to a point where the said person can hear noise, but can't make out any of the words. That 
wife apparently then sits on her phone playing games. So she's not turning the volume down to go to sleep. She's turning the volume down for no particular reason. No one wins. It's not disturbing anybody else, apparently. Why does this happen? I would argue that potentially the television at this point should just be turned off completely. Okay, okay, I'll take that on board. It should either be turned off or not turned down. What's the point in turning it down so it can't be heard? So if the if the said person, the person who's racist, is actually watching the television, uh, actively watching television, actively then watching it shouldn't te- be turned down, or and it shouldn't be turned off. Okay. If the person said person isn't actively watching the television, then maybe and they're awake, then a discussion should be had of, are you okay if I turn this off? Turning down shouldn't be an option because there's no point. Um, in which the person A can decide whether they want it turned off or not. Yep. If the other person is unable to make a decision, they're out of their uh, possibility to make a decision that they're asleep, um, then it it should, should be turned off. Okay, that sounds fair enough. And maybe all screen should be off. All screens and, and no screen... Um, no screen some, some would say that that's quite unhealthy anyway to be... Yes. Uh, yeah. Um, I... I agree. I agree with what you're saying there, and I can feed this back through the surgeries. Uh, basically, um, I think that person, if they continue to use that or behave in such a manner, and as we say, if that person is actually watching that program, they should be uh, punished in a way perhaps where some of their viewing uh, time is taken away from them. Or perhaps they're not allowed to watch certain programs that they like mm. to watch. Like, and they have to wear an ankle bracelet. Yeah, that they explode if if they've gone watching. within ten meters. Yeah, yeah. Okay, that's that one done as well. <laughs> um, Great, this is working really well. I think. Well, this one. Yeah, this one's about music and podcasts. So, I I don't believe we've ever been guilty of this. Just right. thought I'd highlight. Okay. We definitely have. Okay. Uh, that have noises in the background. That cause confusion when driving, such as sirens or car crash noises. Uh, yes. Yes. Okay. I quite agree with that. I've listened to many podcasts that have had sirens on them, or even the actual just tracks, actual music, that have had sirens on them. I've got a very niche, uh, <laughs> I love sort of, Ambulance based music. Yeah. No, I, I, it's. It, and if it don't sirens. sound like a fire engine, I ain't listening. No. Um, and it is a distraction. I mean, people talk about music within cars and about the fact that it can actually have uh, an effect on your concentration and that. Um, but you're absolutely right. One thing I would say as well, I can add to this. Um, on a personal level, I've been listening to an audio book in the car. And the audio book I've been listening to is a, a, The Woman in Black, which is like a ghost story, uh, which has some effects in the background and some quiet, eerie music. And I, on my route to work, I drive through some countryside and through some lanes. And it is a big distraction. And there was one point where a, sort of a... a you know what I mean by a stab of music comes in, which yeah. was quite a shocking bit in it. And it made me jump and I was driving. So it can't, it's not a good thing, is it? Perhaps, you know, I don't know what the answer to this is because if it's too relaxing, you could fall asleep. If it's too aggressive, you could it could affect your driving. If, if it's a distraction, like you say, like a siren or something like that, you know. Look, I feel like it's one of these things. I feel like certain podcasts should be let off from it. However, every other podcast of yeah. music. Yeah, I mean, I don't think we stray into that area. No, I think even if we did, it wouldn't, Maybe be, inten- fall it wouldn't be intentional. Therefore, no. I don't think we should uh, be prosecuted for it. However, yeah. if uh, it is done, I feel like it should come with a... Uh, a warning beforehand? Chopping off at least two fingers. Fair enough. Yep. They can still drive, but it will be uncomfortable. Yeah. Okay. 
Uh, the next one when I they had, run out of fingers, right? Well, then that's then it's they like having to, points they, on your license. When they run out of fingers, yeah, they have surgery to add more fingers, then have them chopped off again. Yep. yep. Okay. Mine's another television based crime. Television, right? While watching television in a area where other people are as well. Individuals watch or listen to things on their phones at an, at an, at an unacceptable volume. Uh, apparently, this seems to be happening more frequently, and no one seems to say anything about it. It didn't used to happen, but it's, it's coming into play more and more. Like they don't even know what they're doing and that what they're listening to is actually as loud or as what's actually on the television that other people are watching. So I can imagine how annoying that would be. Well, the thing is with this particular one yeah, is I understand it. Do you? Yes. However, um, I do think we need to take into account uh, personal viewing of these mobile devices and... They are almost in themselves a TV. So, is the TV not too loud for the personal device? Okay, well, let's let's I'll, let's play out the scenario. Um, I'm I'm sitting in the front room. I'm watching one of my favourite programs on the TV. Right, you're not allowed the, to watch TV. In oh, the front room. okay. I'm a bad example of it because I'm not allowed to watch TV. Right, someone else is in the front room watching their program. Right, they've been waiting to watch this program. Someone walks in. They don't even necessarily have to live in the house, but they're they're visiting. Right. They're not interested with what's on the televisions, so they get hold of their phone and they start watching videos and things which are quite loud. And it's as if they're listening to that and they cannot... It's like they've got headphones on, but they haven't got headphones on. It's like they don't understand why that would disturb what's going on in that room already. So I I think that's quite... You know, it's a I bit find like the walking on the pavement. It's it's the consideration for other people. I haven't had this written as a letter to me, but what makes me think of a similar kind of thing, though, is in occasions where, um, so person A often sits and watches TV whilst also on their phone or on their laptop, mainly on their phone. Person B is watching something television, but also has their phone out and is looking yeah. at something. Whilst person A isn't watching TV. Yeah. Person A comes into the room, picks up the remote control and changes the channel. Person B says, why have you changed the channel? And person A says, you weren't watching it, you were on your phone. But right. person A often watches TV, in air quotations, whilst on their phone. Mm-hmm. Um, and I don't it's know often told I that I'm <laughs> often told, other people told, no, I'm watching TV, you can't change it. Right, so it's slightly different. Yeah. But it's it's the it's another it's something that came into my head. All right, it's another thing where I think um, if if someone's already watching something to come in and then start watching something that's going to be playing at the same time. Uh, we do have to also ask sense. the question you said about someone visiting the house who doesn't even necessarily live here. Yeah, yeah. There is also the point of I understand that maybe they should turn it down. However, what if they haven't got somewhere else to go and watch this video? Why would they think that they they are they walk into a room where someone is already watching something? Why do, why do they become more important than the person who's sitting there watching that? Program? Why is the person more important watching? The, why is the person watching? Well, the they're there already. Important? Well, this person's already watching something on their phone as they walk in. No, 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 not as they walk in. They come in. They are not interested in what's so going you're, on. So what there. you're saying is the person who's been there longest is the most important. No, I, I'm saying if someone's actually watching something, why would you then put something on that's sounded, actually going to make their viewing? Sounds just like a Tory. Wow. <laughs> Stop doing it. I mean, I I think that it's just another bit about respect. And I think personally, I would take their phone off and put it in a box, take that box, lock it, take that box to an undisclosed place. Uh, dig a big hole, put it in the hole, bury it. Um, because of my age, forget where I've buried it, come back and 
we could all sit and watch the same programs. I think then the person starting off of that will uh, will change the television settings so that the person who's buried it doesn't actually know how to use the TV anymore because okay. they're the person set up in the first place. So that's so that's still out there. I think that's going to have to go to a high co- higher higher court yep. or or the uh, you know an independent. Now, this is something that has been highlighted to me, that sometimes people are difficult to read. So, people should have to wear things that signify their mood and how they feel towards people as to cause less confusion. So, rather than thinking, oh, uh, this person, I don't know if they like me or not, they just wear a badge that says, I don't like you. Similarly, if they're in a bad mood, they wear a badge that says, I'm in a bad mood. Don't bother talking to me. Right. So these are people you can't read their faces because I work with people that I'm very aware of. of well, it's easy because they're normally in the same sort of mood. But uh, yeah. Because what is infuriating sometimes is when you walk into a room and you're in quite a good mood and the person goes, what's up with you? It's just my face. Why are you, why are you asking if I'm in a bad mood? Now I'm in a bad mood because you just said my face looks like I'm in a bad mood. Wow, a bit of deja vu just kicked in then. Oh, what, what, what wow, wow, thing. that's weird. Um, I think, yeah, I get that. I do, I do understand that. When someone that. asks, I said, why are you in a bad mood? It puts you in a bad mood. I often get people saying, uh, God, you look tired. Or, um, have you been ill? Now, sometimes I feel, yeah, I know, obviously on this podcast, we, we've ascertained that I'm often not very well, but... Um, you know, sometimes I feel all right and there's nothing worse than someone coming up to you and saying, um, oh, did you get no sleep when you really had a good night's sleep? Yeah. And you think, well, do I really look that bad? Yeah. So I guess I get the, uh, actually, no, I am in a good mood. It's just that I've got a resting bitch face. Yeah. So I feel like there should be badges or something to signify what mood you're in. Plus, well, colours, I think people maybe. that maybe struggle with relationships, they can go, I don't fancy you, don't bother asking me out. Right. Or... Yeah, ask me out. In my in my youth, I didn't need someone to wear a badge to realise that. Um, so yeah, but I get that. I get that. Or a colour, you know. So literally, you've got red. I'm approachable. I'm wearing green. I'm not approachable. I'm wearing red. I might be okay. Just tread carefully, Amber. I have hypothermia. Blue. Yeah. Yeah. I'm feeling very cold. Can you tell? So, if people don't abide by that law, yeah, ten years in prison. Do you think that's enough? It's fine. Life, right? <laughs> <laughs> okay. No, I agree with that. Brilliant. Right. My next one. I have. Uh, this is a personal one, uh, and I have. Is raised this your first this, personal one? Uh, yeah, yeah. None of the others have anything to do with me. Um, it's specific to. This time of year, perhaps we've just passed the the time of year that is really an issue. But if you're um, listening to this podcast at a different time of year, then maybe it's the right time of yeah, year. Yeah, well, maybe. If you don't listen to this until next December, this is going to be relevant. Um, at Christmas time, but unfortunately other times during the year, because now there seems to be an idea about doing stuff for Halloween. Oh, and I know spring, what you're about to say. There's a recent craze of having what I term as door fongs, and it causes absolute havoc in the delivery industry. So we've ascertained that I'm a postman, right? We've talked about it lots of Um Someone should do a musical about that just to make it they clear. They should, shouldn't they? And they should put it on a podcast and it should be around the sort of 15th one they do. Um, I cannot get my head around this. I am not against decorating your house or decorating your front room or decorating anything. A wreath anything, looks right? quite good. A wreath does look quite good. A bow looks okay, but I, the difficulty bow, with it... I struggle with a bow, but yeah. People are a slave to this sort of ridiculous fashion and don't seem to understand that by doing it, their letterbox becomes... Out of action. And by door fongs, we mean the massive ribbons that people wrap so around So we're talking the about the ribbons that they wrap their door up like a present. Yeah. So they are basically putting two lots of quite tight material across their letterbox. So anything that goes in there 
has got to be either pushed in sideways, bent up, folded, whatever, if it goes in there at all. And I've had people complain to me about the state of their post. And I look at them and say, what, what, what do you want me to do? You know. You know what? So, Sorry, you got more to say. No, all I've got to say about it is, and also people will put reefs on them. Now, reefs are absolutely fine again, and obviously they do spring ones now and autumn ones and like Halloween ones and that. But think about where you're putting them on your front door. Again, don't put them over the letterbox. What, yeah. what what goes through people's minds? I mean, what do these people do when they put up a Christmas tree? Do they put it in front of their telly and then sit there moaning about the fact they can't see what's on telly? It's moronic. It is. So what I would say is there needs to be quite a severe punishment for these people. Well, I completely agree with this one. And not so much because I deliver posts, but I just think they look ridiculous. Now, I think the only exception to this rule should be if someone has been bought a door as a present and it's wrapped up like in a bow. Okay, like a I'll present. give you that. Okay, right. so if they've been bought a door, then yes, they can wrap up the door. However, in every other case, absolutely not. And I feel like it should come with a punishment of a confiscation of your firstborn child. Yeah, so the firstborn, I think, yeah. should be taken away I mean, from it's just a given, around. yeah. Or, and I'll give them this, every... Delivery person is issued with a huge pair of scissors. You know when you open up supermarkets and things like that? Right, yeah. And they are allowed, with no repercussions, to cut that ribbon so they can put the post through. And even better, the person whose door they've had to cut the ribbon for has to applaud them as they do it. Absolutely. And then yeah. shake their hands. And take a video of them, yeah. yeah. Okay, great. <laughs> that one's I completely... I think we're on the same oh, page with that madness. one. I feel sorry. I've had heard, I've heard things <laughs> saying that people would feel that there should be a public announcement made to maybe their household every time the last X is about to be eaten. So X could be biscuit. It could be jaffa cake. It could be lemon slice. It could be can of drink. And all these kind of things. So every time there's the last one, there should be a public announcement going, I'm about to eat this last one, just so you know, for when you go into the cupboard, thinking you're going to eat maybe a chocolate digestive, but they're all gone and you're going to be upset. Right, I'm hearing you. I'm yep. hearing you loud and clear on that one. I think, yes, I think that uh, the food usually is bought... Obviously, if there's younger children, it's the adults that buy the food. When the children become adults themselves, they usually uh, contribute to the uh, food or to the buying of the food through uh, regular payments and whatever. So, yes, I think, again, it's about common decency. I think it's... Uh, I, I, I would never do that myself. Um mm -hmm. I, I, because I never. To be honest, I'm a victim of this. Oh, I often go to the cupboard and think, "Where's such and such?" Well, the chocolate and, digestives have gone. It's an interesting story about the digestive biscuits, right? Right. There were, and I, and because I've had it before, where I've bought <coughs> a pack of digestive biscuits and I've gone to eat them, and someone's eaten my entire pack, but then had to buy me another pack. Because they've eaten the entire pack. Well, there's a funny and I've gone to eat that pack, but they've then eaten that pack as well. But there's a funny story, and I don't want to try and pass the blame on to someone else about this, but um, personally there was an incident with some chocolate digestives recently where there was two in a packet, two left in a packet. Mm -hmm. And I went to take one of them. Because it was a larger packet as well, wasn't it? It was, but like obviously people have been going through it. I mean, I don't remember eating any of them, but sure. Well, and nor I do them. I, really. Um, <laughs> and then there was two left in it, so I went to take one. And I uh, there, I won't name, but someone, not you or me, but someone else who lives in this house, said to me, um, we might as well take both of them. I said, well, no, I'll leave one for, let's say, person C, right? And they said, oh, there's no point, that will annoy him even more. So you might as well eat both of them. So I ate both of them. I understand Equally, that. Equally. I understand that, but there should have been a public announcement. I get that. I get there should be some more communication. 
I don't know in what medium we should do that. There was another incident with a lemon slice, as you brought up lemon slice, where um, I had had a lemon slice for my lunch. And then I think two days on the trot I'd had a lemon slice as part of my lunch. And then there was one left. So I left that because I didn't want to eat the last one. The same way as I don't drink the last can of Coke because I think someone else might want that more than I do. Yeah. So I think if if we if we're more like me, uh, right. if people are more like me in these sort of instances, I think then it, and I get I get that I don't know how this will be communicated. Whether it's something sort of a uh, an advert on TV between Coronation Street and Coronation Street, or uh, article in a newspaper, or just something up on a white. Board. White board. board. <laughs> okay. Is that do you want? Yep. Yep. Okay. Oh, uh, uh death. Death, <laughs> yeah, definitely. Um Vaping. Right. Right. Uh while I applaud, and this is a personal thing, why I applaud anyone who takes a step to quit smoking by substituting it, if that's the way they're going. Uh I do not want to passively smoke a large blueberry mango or passion fruit on a daily basis. I don't want to start walking through. There seems to be a thing with people who vape who think that because the smell of the vape, in their mind, it's it's something completely different. It's something pleasant. So because of the smell of that vape might be some sort of citrus fruit that you don't mind having it blown in your face or walk through a mist like you're coming out on stars on their eyes right I don't understand that it is still something that someone is inhaling and then blowing out of their see see, the thing is day to day if you think about it these are just visualising what actually happens in real life like for you breathing, you're breathing out this big old air yeah. cloud, but I don't see it. No. But I can live with that better than if I can visually see this massive air cloud coming out of someone's face hole. Yeah. Yeah. But I'm they seem to think one. it's more palatable than cigarette smoke, it which is, to a certain degree it is. it is, but I could do without either of them. I see, I've never vaped, I've never smoked, but I have sniffed. Um, not strongly because obviously it all just comes out but I've sniffed the vape just to see what it smells like and they do smell nice don't get me wrong they do smell nice compared to that of other stuff Um, but no I don't want to be breathing in especially someone's second hand smoke I don't even want to breathe it in myself especially the second hand I don't understand how people think it's completely different I'm sorry it's not to do with us it's to do with general society and that's why I feel like these people should actually uh, receive uh, they should actually, I think what it what should they have is community service. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Where what they've got to do is they've got to go around to dog parks and every time a dog does a poo, the dog owner is told, no, 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 don't pick it up and they have to pick it up. Yeah. Or they have to they wear take the poo home one of them. those big space bubble helmets and when they're actually vaping they vape inside that so they can get the full 100% some might say 200% benefit of those vapors and then they suffocate um we might have to fire through this last couple quite quickly okay because we have been talking for 30 minutes oh dear right go on in this bit however it should be illegal to fall asleep in the bathroom after having a bath when not living on your own. Because other people in said household may need to use the bathroom for other re- things. And then upon coming out of their bedrooms, will go to the bathroom to be greeted by the fact that the same person has been in there for the last hour and a half. And they've been waiting to use the bathroom for the last hour and a half to maybe brush their teeth or urinate or pull hair out of, with some tweezers so they have to go downstairs where there is no toothbrush and toothpaste or they tweezers. may be able to urinate but there's also no tweezers okay so I don't get this is someone falling asleep in the bath or someone falling asleep in another area or in the both right 
does open, happen. Obviously, both. in the bath, dangerous. Yes. You know, I think there's probably... I thought like this person issue. may have been told this. Yeah, it's dangerous, but they probably aren't, aren't in control. They probably work really, really hard. And so, you know, when they're relaxed, they really relax and they just fall asleep. So that's, most that's, people yeah. take showers nowadays. I know, but you have to stand up for a shower, don't you? And that's tiring in itself. If you've been on your feet all day, then the thought of then standing and and trying to and especially and older people off the dirt in when dirty you're trying water. to lift up your legs to wash yourself and that that's how so many accidents are caused by the showers. Does does one wash their leg in the bath? Yes. But how one does would one be do sitting, that? They lift their leg out of the bath and then they wash it and then they does, put it. How does one wash torso in the bath? Do they stand the up same in the bath? Way. Or you lift your body out of the bath. Have you never had a bath before? I haven't had a bath in years. Right. Which moves me on to my next. No, <laughs> um, yes, no, I get that, and I get the fact. If uh, I mean, it's it is really frustrating if someone's gone into the bathroom for whatever for their ablutions or whatever, and they are in there for ages because they're distracted by something else they're doing. It is infuriating. So I'm fully on board with this one. Whether they're sitting on the toilet with their phone, or they're falling asleep Do in know the facilities, a fact is men. Do take longer on the toilet for other reasons, generally, because women often complain that men spend too much time on the toilet. But there's reasons why men spend more time on the toilet. There's more enjoyment in it for a man. <laughs> what? Well, feels nice to do a poop. Okay. <laughs> Don't quite know why that's any different from one person to the next, but there you go. Okay, moving on quite swiftly then. We're, I think we need to have some sort of a, um, uh, uh, rotor and time cap on the usage of facilities. My last so, one. Hang on, what happens if this person does fall asleep in the bath? Well, that's a different thing entirely. They have that to be kept up overnight by a issue. cat. Yeah. Yeah, that is probably why they're so tired as well, because they don't sleep at night, because they're constantly pestered. Uh, people will break wind in company and then say, pardon my bottom, like it nullifies the trauma, embarrassment, and sometimes smell. Um, I get that people break wind and don't say it, and it might seem ruder to not say, but... It doesn't make any difference because that person's already broken wind deliberately. It's not. It's, it's not just come out. They've broken wind deliberately, and then they say, "Pardon my bottom." Line. And they're even saying it like it's not their fault. It's their bottom's fault. It now, wasn't anything to do with them. What I would argue with this this uh, instance is a person may expel wind or gaseous yeah. stuff from their rectum. Yeah, yeah. I know how it works. Yeah, um, and they may do this unintentionally at times yep they fall out of me when i'm not yeah. expecting it however it is better to acknowledge the fact that this has come out yeah they do not say it as if to it nullifies it but they say it as if to just say i'm sorry this has happened but it's happened but but if you... however this person also chooses to do it in areas under their control such as maybe their armchair or their own bedroom or their own bed well, I very much chair. doubt if that person but in their person own bed or in their in own another, room, they say, pardon my bottom. This person says it in every instance, even when they're on a team's court at work and says it under their breath. <laughs> so so if that person's sitting on the sofa with you and then they turn slightly towards you and then they break wind and then they say, pardon my bottom, that's totally acceptable. This yeah? person wouldn't turn slightly towards this other person. But that person has. There is some... This person I have wouldn't seen do some that. evidence of no, that. But this... What is worse is when one person does it on another person's bed. But then Loudly. said person, again, might not be um, able to control that, perhaps because of age. Maybe they shouldn't be allowed on the other person's well, perhaps bed. Perhaps they then. shouldn't. But it's like walking into a room, uh, hitting oh, so they- someone, and then saying... Pardon my punch, and expecting that to be acceptable. No, because it's not intentional. It's like walking into a room, tripping over, and accidentally headbutting the person, and then saying, "Pardon Sorry. my headbutt." Yeah, but then, but my, my the instances my I'm hands talking up, about, my no, hands no, 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 up. No, 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 you'll have to wait until I've finished. <laughs> no, that, I was the, talking. This is my point. 
the instances I'm talking about, the person isn't, it isn't an accident. That person has made a conscious decision. Has got gas and will have a stomachache if they don't let it go. So instead of going to the toilet, they go and they make noises and they go, oh, pardon my bottom. And then it's as if that, that means, oh, oh, no, oh. it's no, it's not nullified. This ne- again, this person has never said it's nullified it. They've just said, I'm sorry. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Another thing, though, which is worse than all of this, is when someone does it right next to the food they are preparing that's for other people. Well, in that, the direction of the food that they're being sorry, prepared. I'm sorry. Anybody who does that don't doesn't deserve to be able to cook everybody their dinners every single night. Yes. They should be kept well away from the kitchen uh, and only be waited on like the rest of the family. So I totally agree with that. Who made your dinner tonight? I made half of it. Uh, your mother made the other half. You dished up. No, I didn't. Yes, you did. No, I didn't. Yes, you did. Well, I did dish up. I also done the pasta and I finished off the, because uh, it wasn't being stirred or anything, the, the main bit that's, and put the garlic bread that's in. That's the end, I feel. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so I'm glad we could get that all sorted and I'm sure we'll be sitting again at some point to to uh, debate some of these Really important issues. Yeah. And now we have received messages. However, we don't well, I don't feel like we're actually in the position that we can read them out on this particular podcast, just due to the length of the podcast so far. Okay. And I have a story I need to tell that I've tried to tell on several different podcasts. That will have to wait till next yes, week's one. Unfortunately. But it has been great. If you do want to send any messages to us, you can do so on the website, fatherandsundays.com. That's sun spelled S-O-N, by the way. Fatherandsundays.com. Or.co.uk, both work. Uh, and go on the contact page and you can send us a message on there. Complaint, uh, suggestion, question, just comment, whatever you want to do. Um, all the episodes are available on the website as well, but you can also go on your chosen podcast, podcast platforms such as Spotify, iTunes, whatever. Um, remember to rate us there and there. And like, share, and follow our social medias such as Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. Okay. Okay, well, that's the end of that. And all I can say now is... Bye-bye.